Hello there, everyone, and welcome to the Real Life Process Podcast. I am so glad that you are here and that you are listening in this week. This is going to be a fun one. We're going to go through a top 10 list today because every week here on the podcast, I invite you to listen in because we share tips and stories and practical action steps that can lead you to live a life from rest not rush and truly do what matters. So we'll share all kinds of ideas. And today we are sharing a top 10 list. One of my favorite things to do is just give you a list. Again, we love to be practical. We love to do that through the content that we have here at The Real Life Process, those four components that help you live from rest, not rush, living out your best real life. But we also like to do it in the everyday, ordinary things that are going on. And this week, I want to talk about 10 ways to have the best uh best outcome, I guess I will say, the best outcome at an event, a conference, or a retreat that you're attending. Here in just a couple of weeks, we are inviting our certified facilitators in for a retreat. So twice a year, we bring them in for a retreat. And it's always good to go back over, how can I prepare for a retreat? conferences are opening back up, events are opening back up. We don't have to stay virtual anymore. And as we do that, we want to be purposeful in how we attend events, conferences, and retreats. So if you're watching in on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, you'll be able to see me pop these up on the YouTube channel in a list so that you can capture them. But if you're not watching on the YouTube channel, just grab a pen and paper as you're listening to the podcast and you can go through and see these top 10 very practical ways for you to get the most out of a retreat, a conference, or an event. So first of all, the very first one is, why am I going? Make sure that you know your why. What is the reason that you want to attend this event, to invest this money, to step away from your business and from your family and from other things? Why are you going? What's the big why? And I think that is huge to know your why, because then you go with intention to whatever you're coming to. So for our facilitators, when they come to our retreats, a lot of their why is to connect with one another, to be in person with those that they're networking with and that they're doing the weekly calls with. So to be in community is a huge why. But what might it be for you? Is it to learn a new skill? Is it to meet people, kind of find your your group, your community? Is it to hear new ways of doing the kind of work that you do, to be encouraged? I encourage you to write out your why. Now we're going to get to some really practical things. I'm just going to think about this in the order of you going to this event. So here's another practical one. It's just pack light. Don't take a lot of things with you. You can possibly take a carry-on if you're flying, throw something in the back of your car, your minivan, whatever it is, but pack light. Most of the time at a conference or a retreat event I go to, I am notorious for overpacking. And then I realize that pretty much at a conference or an event, you wear the same clothing all day. So you don't have time to go back and change and change for dinner and those types of things because you don't want to miss out on being with the people or walking in the exhibit hall or doing social uh, networking or whatever you might do. So pack light and pack in layers. Make sure you take a jacket. If you're a lady, make sure you take simple jewelry, comfortable shoes, Um, maybe a backpack or something uh, that you want to carry things in. That can be your carry-on on the plane. But pack light, pack as little as you possibly can, because many times you're going to come home from an event with some things, either some goodies that were given away or some things. I know for our facilitators, I won't spoil all the surprises, but we will have things for them when they come. We will have things for them to take home. So make sure you pack light. Our third thing of our top 10 
uh, for these events and retreats and conferences is if at all possible, stay at the event space or as close as you can. So stay there, stay on site, stay as close as you can. You don't want to be driving in 30 minutes, 45 minutes, just to save a little bit of money on a hotel room because you'll miss out on what goes on before and what goes on after. You'll also miss out on being with everyone else. Many times, some of the greatest conversations that I have are in the hotel lobby or after the event is over or over dinner with someone that's staying in the same place as me. So stay at the event or as close as possible if you can. Now, one of my favorite things that I've learned over the years, and I love to travel, many of you know that, so I love to go to these types of events and conferences. One of the things I've learned is to come in a day ahead if possible and stay a late day late if possible. Now, let me tell you why. Coming in a day ahead lets you get into, if you're traveling time zones or any of those things, it lets you settle in find your way around. If you've drove in or you've rented a car, or even had to take an Uber from the airport or whatever it might be, you kind of get your bearings and you feel better. Plus you can get a good night's rest before you settle in. Maybe you'll even be able to sign up and get registered in the day before. I know for our events, we have a gathering meal on the Thursday night before things start on Friday. Now, it's not a required meal, but we invite everyone to come and just settle in and get into community. If it's an event that you've been to before, you might even be able to have dinner with someone. Be purposeful about the night before. Another thing that I've learned to do is to stay over that next night and not rush home. Now, I know that you could be tired, but this gives you time to settle in, maybe catch up on some emails and some work that you've unplugged on on that evening and be able to travel home and be in a good space when you get home, not coming in late at night. So block out on your calendar the day before an event and the day after event. Don't come home and think, oh, I'm going to dive right back in. You're going to want to reconnect in your personal life as soon as you get home and and get re-engaged there as well. So that if you stay over that night, you can re-engage some with workspace. Again, you could have dinner with someone. Some of the greatest conversations might be after the event. You also can process through maybe some of your notes and your takeaways and your learnings, or just spend some free time seeing a new city or uh, taking advantage of a restaurant that you've heard about or some of those things to just relax and process. Live from rest, not from rush. It's a huge part of going to events. I would recommend to you that you review the agenda or the conference schedule ahead of time. We always send this out as someone who hosts events, but we always send that out. But find it online, find it on the website, print it out if you can, and just begin to highlight and check what are the things that you'd like to attend. If it's a conference that you get to pick and choose, uh, workshops and that type of thing. If it's more of a retreat type event like we host, you know, just being familiar with when is lunch going to be? When are we going to break at the end of the evening? When is the kind of margin going to be in the day where I'll want to plan to get out and go for a walk or get kind of some exercise in to just clear my head. So just being familiar with the agenda can be a huge thing as well. The sixth thing is starting to get into a little bit more of the who. Who do you want to meet? Who might be the people that will be at the event or be at the conference, the speaker that you want to hear, the conversation that you want to make sure that you have. Have you been in your online communities and found out who else is going to the retreat, the event, the conference that you might be able to meet up with that you've never met in person before? Who is the person that has been a mentor to you? Someone that you want to make sure that you connect with. Something fun that we're doing on our retreat in a couple of weeks, not only are our certified facilitators coming in, but we are doing our book release party. I am so excited about the book release party. 
And because we're doing the book release party, we have lots of different circles of my friends coming in masterminds that I've been in, networking groups that I've been in, friends and family, other colleagues that I work with here in my local community, plus our certified facilitators. So we have a lot of circles coming together. And as all those circles come together, I want to encourage each other to meet one another and start to cross circles. I cannot wait to make certain introductions to people. And we are letting our people know ahead of time who's coming, who will be speaking, who will be sharing with them. Some of them are already setting up times to get together for dinner as they come in a day or two early. I have been in a particular mastermind with Dan Miller, one of my mentors. I talk about him all the time here on the podcast. He wrote the foreword for my book that's coming out uh, and that we're releasing in just a couple of weeks to that community. And then it'll release out into the big world November the 1st. And one thing I've learned with Dan's community, we always go to the same place. And he's moved recently, so we're going to a different location down in Siesta Key, but we were always in Franklin, Tennessee. And one of the things that I have learned to do there is to go in early. And I know my way around. I'm comfortable in that space. I get together with other friends. I stay over and lengthen the time. So we turn a two-day retreat into about a four-day get-together. But I kind of know ahead of time, who do I want to meet with, with this time? Who do I want to have lunch with? And I reach out and I form those relationships. So who do you want to meet up with? And then the next one, number seven, is what do you want to learn about? Even if you're in a community that gets together on a regular basis, our certified program gets together twice a year for retreats. Who do I want to lean into this time and learn from that I didn't learn from last time? How do I want to engage with them and network with them and, and talk about what the work that they do so I can learn about them? Or maybe you're going to something that's a particular topic that you want to learn about, or they offer multiple things. I've been to conference before where all I did was follow a certain track, like the speaking track, or the technical track, or the podcasting track. As an entrepreneur, many times I'm looking for a conference that offers tracks, and I can just go to that whole track, and I don't have to decide where to go to but I just follow the track. Or you're choosing a conference that is about a particular topic or, um, you know, a particular subject that you want to learn about. So that is number seven. What do you want to learn about? Number eight is a little more practical again, but if you're attending something over multiple days, get good sleep. Now, I know the tendency is to want to stay up really late and and, uh, really like, I don't want to miss out on anything. But what happens is you get tired, you get worn down, and then your brain cannot engage. You can't show up as your best self the next morning. Or you're late the next morning because you didn't want to get out of bed and you missed the one thing that you wanted to go to, the one thing that you wanted to attend. So make sure that you pace yourself well. That goes back to number four of coming in a day early and staying a day late. But making sure that you pre-decide, we love pre-deciding here at the process, that you pre-decide what time you're going to leave and go to bed. I promise you will get exactly whatever you need out of that event. One of the things that we do, and if you're hosting your own events, you might consider this, is we actually have a time that we kind of shut down the party. So we host here at my co-working space or out at my farm, and we have some different locations, and we actually kind of put the boundaries on for people. Now, what they do when they get back to the hotel is up to them, but we make sure that we have good boundaries around uh, what time we're kind of closing down an event. So get some good sleep. Number eight, or number nine, excuse me, is... After the event is over, these last two uh, takeaways is, who do you want to follow up with? Who are the top three to five people that you make connection with 
If you can walk away from an event or a conference with three to five great new relationships, that is a huge win. So who do you want to follow up with from this conference or event that you just attended? And then reach out to them. Give yourself a deadline. Again, pre-decide, I'm going to follow up within a week or within two weeks, or maybe even at the event, you go ahead and get them on your calendar or get their email from them so that you can follow up well. Who do you want to follow up with to start that new relationship? And then the very last one is set a time to review your learnings and your takeaways and what you want to implement. So your learnings, your takeaways, and what you want to implement. That is so important because if you just got to the conference and then you don't have any learnings or takeaways or implementation from that, it's not going to be the kind of conference or event or retreat that you wanted it to be. You kind of are going to leave like, I think I just wasted some time. I wasted two or three days or four days or the finances and the investment that you made. So it comes in, what are your learnings, what are your takeaways, and what are your implementation? And I encourage you to go back and look through your notes to find these. Look through the takeaways that you had. Look at what you wrote down maybe in the conference packet. And you might be surprised what you wrote compared to what your brain remembers. And there might be some nuggets in there that you've totally forgotten. And I'll say this is probably the one I struggle with the most because I'm an action taker. I'm a very forward moving type. And so my personality is like, that's great. I'm going to go and I'm going to implement that. And then I don't take the time always to look through each and every part of that implementation. And so I'm working on number 10. I'm working on going back and reviewing and looking through my notes for my learnings and my takeaways and my implementation. Not getting stuck there, but looking at my notes. So as you look at this list, why am I going, packing light, stay at the event space or close to it, come in a day ahead and stay a day late, review the agenda or schedule, who do you want to meet, what do you want to learn, get some good sleep, who do who do you want to follow up with and setting a time for reviewing your learning takeaways and implementation? I just want you to, as you wrote those down, as you put those in, or as you're watching it over on the YouTube channel, and you can visually see them, what are the one or two that you want to put in place the next time you go to an event, a retreat, or a conference? I have built on this list over time, and I pretty much live this out now when I am attending something. I can't wait to go to my next event. I'm actually going to be going in October to a couple of things I'm going to be attending, and I can't wait. Uh, I'm excited to be back out on the road again. I haven't gone anywhere for about six months as we've been in book release mode. And so as I get the book released and we get that all kicked off and my team leans in, I am going to be attending a couple of things in October with a couple of my mentors and my friends at their event. And I cannot wait because I know why I'm going and I know who I want to follow up with and I know who I want to meet at those events and uh, who I want to have relationship with. To me, conferences and events and retreats are so much about building relationships and building community. In fact, I can't wait for our event that's coming up in a couple of weeks. It's a part of what we do here at The Process. We believe in coming together, networking, and being together in a community. It's one of our C's. It's one of the things besides the content and the connection and the coaching that we love about our certification program and our ongoing network that we have. It's not just about certification for us. It's not just about teaching uh, people to use the process, but it's also about being together in community. So we would love to connect with you and we would love to stay in connection with you by being on our email list, 
following us in social media on our Facebook group or over on Instagram. And you can find that all in our show notes, or you can go to our website at thereallifeprocess.com. We spell real life with one L, thereallifeprocess.com. Put real life all together in one word, thereallifeprocess.com. You can get on our list by signing up for one of our free offers. Right now, we have our needs and values assessment out there for you, an intro to that. It's one of our introductions to one of our key signature tools that we use, that we use with our clients, that we teach our certified facilitators to use as well. So connect with us at The Real Life Process. You'll learn more about our book release, when the book is coming out. We now have also a page up, therealliveprocess.com forward slash book, and you can go and you can pre-order the book. And when you pre-order, you will be put into an email sequence where you'll find out about all the pre-order bonuses that we have. They're listed right there on the book pre-order page, but then we'll engage with you as we get closer to the launch of the book and let you know about that. That's one of the things you can do. If you're a longtime follower of the process, we'd love to invite you to be a part of our book launch team. And we're actually going to be talking about that on next week's episode. We are so excited. Lindsay Sturkey, our marketing director, will be back and we'll be talking about how you can be a part of the book launch, how you can learn, how you can get the book early, all the things that go with the book launch. So we cannot wait to do that with you as well. Remember that every ordinary day has an extraordinary moment. You just have to look for them and we hope that you'll find some of those moments at an event, a conference, or a retreat. Have a great week, everyone.